morning and, and welcome to the meeting. Um, peace funding is something I'm very familiar with over the years because I come from a border county of Cabin and would have been involved with community groups in the past uh, personally that you know access to peace funding. <coughs> I know as Deputy Smith referred to Cabin County Council. Um, have had quite a number of applications. Their biggest problem, they had too many applications. Now, some may not have fitted the criteria, but even when you weed those out, some were looking for quite substantial amounts of money. And I know they were trying to, you know, look at other um, funders as well to come in with it because there'll be projects that there's no point giving them a certain allocation and hoping that they get the funding. Otherwise, they do something that you'd have to ensure that they had the full amount of funding going forward. Um, but... Um, I just want to ask you a number of questions there. You refer in the beginning of your speech um, about a number of projects um, that have weren't completed um, from the last piece of uh, funding and have activity to complete in 2024, but they're doing at their own expense. So they cannot apply for the Peace Plus funding to complete that project. Is that what I'm getting? Yeah. And that might be difficult for some of those projects. Uh, so, so no, um, those projects all have known for some time that okay. they may not have been able to complete. And uh, the majority of those are council-led and the council have given their uh, support that okay. they will complete them. And to be fair, a lot of them are just very small amounts of money at this stage. They got the capital finished and the activity, you know, maybe it's only a hundred, couple of hundred thousand, um, but they have already committed to that. Okay. And in fact, you know, they knew that they were going to be running against um, the timescales. Okay. Do we know the total allocation for the peace plus? funding? Like, is there a total amount allocated? And is it just open for applications in the coming year? Um, or will it be extended into 2025, 2026 and beyond? For the, for the Peace Plus funding? Mm. Yeah, the total programme value is 1.14 billion. Okay. And it runs now until 2030. So okay. what we will do is we're rolling out the calls. We have a schedule of the timetable of calls uh, on our website and we roll out the calls, the majority of which will be rolled out this year. The small grants we intend to stagger so that there will be, you know, say maybe there's quite a bit over the, the two areas of small grants, there's about 40 million. Um, and we might do 10 million this year, 10 million next year, 15 million, what, just to, to roll it out so that it's not all gone in the one in the okay. one go. Yeah. Um, and also it allows for some of those projects to maybe do some exploratory work, some pilot work, some introductory work, and then come back again okay. at another time. Yeah, that was my next so we'll be running for, for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you, you talked about the hard to reach groups mm -hmm. um, and that it's important and I agree with you on, 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 on reaching out to those. But I'm just wondering, like, how do you envisage that will happen? Because if they're hard to reach... Yeah. They are hard to reach. So, I mean, what, what mechanisms are, are going to be used to try and, and uh, reach groups? Because we would have heard in this committee about different groups that wouldn't have their voices heard and haven't had their voices heard yeah. throughout the conflict and since. Yeah, so, well, we're making yeah. sure. We did actually dump, did some work, Paul, maybe you might want to expand on it. We did some work just before the programme actually opened mm -hmm. on um, how we could ex engage with those groups and what were the challenges and why they weren't coming forward. So what we're doing in the current uh, round of calls and applications is making sure that the applicants have had, uh, they've, they've used some of those tools to ensure that they do have some of the harder to reach groups involved, particularly in the youth sector, uh, where there's been an awful lot of um, young people who, you know, if they're left with no support, no network, no mechanisms to engage, can end up in antisocial and, and indeed paramilitary activity. So we're trying to, we really try to focus on how we engage with the youth. Um, but in relation to activities for everything else, we're also looking for new communities to be involved as well mm. as bringing forward the really hard to reach groups that have not become involved. So part of the what we've done in um, theme one under the Built in Peace is to look at, in some areas, there's some single identity work is required to enable some of those groups to actually get to a position to, to be able to do cross-community work. Mm -hmm. So we have allowed for uh, some single identity work that leads on to cross-community work. We've also looked at uh, community leadership because uh, there's a lot of leaders within communities who have reached an age maybe where they're retiring or they've moved on and we need to bring the, the younger people in to engage with those to ensure that we are bringing forward those hard to reach. But we've included all of those types of investment areas in theme one. Um, 
on the small grants front, we, we did a little bit of engagement work probably about a year and a half, two years ago now. It, it, it was fairly piecemeal. It was uh, scratch the surface stuff, but it was around um, getting some of those groups to... Uh, um, the groups that we engaged to do the work had contacts in the wider community. And it was around identifying some of the barriers to them mm. coming forward to previous European funds. Sometimes it's administrative. Uh, sometimes it's community background, sometimes they just don't want to know. Um, the 500 quid from the local council is much easier to get. So we, we, we've, we've earmarked the sort of groups that we would be looking to uh, uh, have come forward under this programme. We certainly have engaged much more with the councils on, on both sides of the border to say, look, the small grants is coming. You can't do small grants under the current uh, uh, local authority programmes, but we do expect a co-design process to be in place to, to uh, you know, to attract a lot of those smaller groups to be involved that haven't been involved before. I, th I think the, the, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. I think the, the, the first year we do this, I think we'll have a lot of um, the already knowns coming forward, but then the osmosis of having those grants trickle out mm. over the next couple of years should be able to attract some more of those groups that are involved. And, and look, uh, 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 we, we are going to engage a, a, what I call a boots on the ground organisation. Um, that has to go to open tender. We, 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 we know the sort of uh, applicants that might come forward to that, so I don't want to really say very much uh, more on that, but those are, those are uh, organisations that would have those very close to the ground community linkages in place. So. We will never capture everybody, yeah. but I think on this occasion we'll capture as many as we can. Yeah, so that it has been designed in such a way that there's funding there to try to access those hard to reach groups mm. and we'll be making sure that you know, we make an effort to do that and that all the applicants have to also ensure that they're doing that. And the small grants will, I think, allow people to have a first experience with, yeah. with the programme. Um, and maybe, as I said, with the single identity work as well, been uh, allowed for the, those groups that that should help. If, if, if I could add, th thank you, Chair. If, if I could add, the, the, from an assessment process as well, um, we have strengthened the, the horizontal principles that are applied to an application to ensure that if, if they are, let's call it, our, our more standard um, applicants, that they are reaching out beyond um, maybe some of, the, of, of, of their normal partners uh, and the horizontal principles cover, cover four key elements, respect for fundamental rights, equality between men and women, taking steps to prevent discrimination uh, and promoting sustainable development. And within each of the calls then, we, we've emphasised um, certain elements to support that. Uh, and so far applicants, certainly in the areas that we've, we've seen applications come in in the area we've, we've applied funding, a lot of the, the applicants have recognised that and strengthened their engagement with those that maybe have previously been underrepresented in our programme. So, you know, we have areas that look specifically at quality and social inclusion, areas around justice and systems and institutions and infrastructure and physical environment. And that element covers theme five, particularly um, with some on, the, on, on theme two, but the other two cut across most of the other elements uh, and investment areas. So that, that's a, a difference from how we've applied that. The weighting on those uh, in terms of assessment is much higher as well.